the phone and she said to me, why don't they, why don't they do the Holy Spirit on a Tuesday anymore? I said, we do. I said, obviously, Father Peter's away, it doesn't get shown, but there is one. And I said, odd occasions, something goes wrong with the technology or what have you. But I said, it is still, but I said, not on YouTube, it's on Facebook. As it says on the newsletter.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We gather on the feast day of Clement, the third successor as the leader of the church after St. Peter. Tremendous light which we will reflect on after our gospel. But we're aware that we are in this line of connection from the very beginning of the church right up until this day with our leader now in Rome, Pope Francis. Let us pray that we will be drawn into the courage that Clement most definitely had. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the Almighty. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You love us and have freed us from our sins by your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us, with those joining us via Facebook, ask the Holy Spirit to unite the entire parish in this prayer of praise. Let 
Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us each year with this celebration to remind us of the wonderful virtues of all your saints, grant us joy in this commemoration of Saint Clement, who was martyr and high priest of your Son, bore out by his witness what he celebrated <laughs> in mystery, and confirmed by example what he preached with his lips. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Well, it has a quite a lengthy reading, and as we always have in the last year of our church year, we're listening to apocalyptic readings, readings that remind us of the end of times and the return of Jesus. It's a particular style of literature, very, very expressive and dynamic, and we really have to listen and read between the lines to gather what it's trying to say to us. Reading from the prophet Daniel. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, you have had a vision, O king. This is what you saw. A statue, a great statue of extreme brightness stood before you, terrible to see. The head of this statue was of fine gold. Its chest and arms were of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet part iron, part earthenware. While you were gazing, a stone broke away, untouched by any hand, and struck the statue, struck its feet of iron and earthenware, and shattered them. And then, Iron and earthenware, bronze, silver, gold, all broke into small pieces, as fine as chaff on the threshing floor in the summer. The wind blew them away, leaving not a trace behind. And the stone that had struck the statue grew into a great mountain, filling the whole earth. This was the dream. Now we will explain to the king what it means. You, O king, king of kings, to whom the God of heaven has been given sovereignty, power, strength, and glory, the sons of men, the beasts of the field, the birds of heaven, wherever they live, he has entrusted to your rule, making you king of them all. You are the golden head. And after you, another kingdom will rise, not so great as you, and then a third of bronze, which will rule the whole world. There will be a fourth kingdom, hard as iron, as iron that shatters and crushes all. Like iron that breaks to pieces, it will crush and break all the earlier kingdoms. The feet you saw, part earthenware, part iron, are a kingdom which will be split in two, but which will retain something of the strength of iron, just as you saw the iron and the clay of the earthenware mixed together. The feet were part iron, part earthenware. Uh, the kingdom will be partly strong and partly weak, and just as you saw the iron and the clay of the earthenware mixed together, so the two will be mixed together in the seed of man. But they will not hold together any more than iron will blend with earthenware. In the time of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and this kingdom will not pass into the hands of another race. It will shatter and absorb all the previous kingdoms 
and itself last forever. Just as you saw the stone, untouched by hand, break from the mountain and shatter iron, bronze, earthenware, silver and gold. The great God has shown the king what is to take place. The dream is true, the interpretation exact. The word of the Lord. We once give glory and eternal praise to him. Give glory and eternal praise to him. All things the Lord has made, bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Angels of the Lord, all oh bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Heavens, bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Waters above and the heavens, bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Powers of the Lord, all oh bless the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Stand erect, hold your head high, because your liberation is near at hand. temple, remarking how it was adorned with fine stonework and votive offerings, Jesus said, All these things that you are staring at now, the time will come when not a single stone will be left on another. Everything will be destroyed. And they put this question to him, Master, they said, when will all this happen then? And what sign will there be that this is about to take place? Take care not to be deceived, he said, because many will come using my name and saying, I am he, and the time is near at hand. Refuse to join them. And when you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be frightened, for this is something that must happen but the end is not so soon. Then he said to them, Nation will fight against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and plagues and famines here and there. There will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Tomorrow Daniel has to deal with another powerful king and leader. But you notice his huge, enormous bravery in telling the king of kings, Nebuchadnezzar, that his kingdom is about to disappear. You'd think if he had a bit of wisdom, he'd kind of go, me, understand dreams, not a chance, mate. Just, you know, can't help you. But he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. He tells this king of his downfall, of change after change after change. Jesus in the Gospel, exactly the same. There is always this change called upon us to participate in until the fullness of the Kingdom is realised. Beginning Sunday we focus on and pray for that in a very, very particular way. Not celebrating the historic birth, but rather we live in the time of change praying for the fullness, working for the fullness of the eternal kingdom of the Father, for justice and peace. So as I said, Clement was the third successor to Peter as 
the leader of the church in Rome, the, the bishop, and he, as all before him, he too was martyred. He got in trouble for not offering incense to the emperor, regarded as a divine god, leading this vast empire, another empire taking over all of the others that had gone before it. Who knows why? But because of his work, because of his development of the phenomenal growth of the church, mainly amongst the poor and the slaves who could be free with their life in Jesus, even though they still had to do the bidding of their masters, of those who ruled over them. But inside, they were different people. He was actually sent to the Crimea to work in the salt mine. So it's a vast journey. In the salt mine, in these terrible conditions, I mean, you know, you remember the vague warm days of summer, to be in the warm and in down onto the ground in a salt mine, working all the hours that you possibly could. The effect on the body must have been mm -hmm. phenomenal. He established 70 chapels in the salt mines underground. To the fury of the Roman guards, he preached, he taught, he baptised, he brought people to faith, he brought people to a new way of life. You can imagine, they'd all got a bit too much for the Romans, so they took him, they put an anchor around his neck and threw him into the sea to drown him. Which is why it is the symbol of Saint Clement, the anchor of hope. The effect and the dynamism of the Roman Empire faded over time. The church grew and grew and grew. And this is why our intention today is for parish renewal. I'm not talking about anything new. It's the ongoing change that Daniel prophesied to. It's the tech change that Jesus focused on. It's the dynamism of evangelization of St. Clement. So we ask him to pray for us, for parish renewal, to be as dynamic as he, in far easier circumstances. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Those of you who are quick of eye will see that another basket has appeared next to the names for the November list. For the first time, I think it's six years, probably more, I celebrated a liturgy in St. Chad's and Lorraine will be particularly impressed when they're having Ofsted in. We had the whole school, first of all years, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, 11 for the second liturgy, along with Claire, our youth minister, and the Reverend Emma Speak from St. Andrews, praying for the faithful departed, those they have lost as young people. They lost two years. To lose two years of your youth in this pandemic is an incredible impact. I feel, and I'm sure Claire will agree, it was a nod. Yeah. It went phenomenally well, phenomenally well. The first one they've had, the first full assembly they've had for over two years. So that in itself great, great that once again with the new acting head, we are being invited to fulfil our ministries in school. And we pray for their ongoing renewal in faith, but also in their ministry as teachers to the children. Sorry, students. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. So as we continue, let's pray for the work of all of our schools, Holy Spirit, St. Clement, St. Edwards, that they be renewed in their mission of faith and education. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious In silence we offer our personal prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, 
ask you, good Lord, to hear the prayers of your faithful offering. Grant them for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings we bring in commemoration of Blessed Clement be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, so that they may be pleasing to your majesty just as the shedding of this martyr's blood was precious in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every word, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr Clement, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We are praying your death, O Lord, and perfect your resurrection until you come Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Inevitably, in his moment of being tossed over with the anchor tied around him, this is the prayer that Clement would have turned to. Let us pray for the eternal kingdom of justice and peace. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, 
but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
please remain seated for our final prayer. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr clement, faithful in your service, and victorious in suffering, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do try and encourage other people to look at the amazing gifts that are available for the craft firm. Those of you online, please forward it to all your contacts in via email, because it really is a stunning material that's been offered to us at really ridiculously low prices. So please encourage that. Please invite and call upon many people to buy tickets for the raffle as well. Again, very generous prizes there. On Sunday, I mentioned the main book I was using for my retreat. This is the secondary one I used, At Home in the Mysteries of Christ, the Grace of the Rosary, by Father Jim McManus and produced by the Redemptorists. It's far too detailed to try and use on Thursdays for the Rosary, but it just opens up incredible insights into each of the mysteries. So I really strongly recommend it to you. Carol has volunteered to get it. Oh good, good. I didn't have a chance to see it before Mass. So if you do have a word with Carol, we're probably able to get, she's great at getting discount for us as well. Uh, so have a think about it. I found it so helpful to take a couple of the threads and then as I walked and prayed the rosary, call them to mind. And wonderful, wonderful insights. Please stand for the blessing. And lastly, he said, seeing the basket, can I say back to the staff and the students in St. Chad's that you will continue to pray for all of their intentions here? Yeah? yeah? Super, I'll do that. I'll ask the Sunday congregation as well as the remaining congregations of the week because it'll be very supportive for them to hear, yes, we really do take this seriously. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
Sight or sound, Barbara? Any sight or sound? Of Jade. 